Hi, welcome back. This is part three of discussion on environmental law, and the first topic we are going to discuss is protection of forest and wildlife. Forest protection in India. Attempts have been made in India from very ancient time for the protection of forest. According to Kautilya's Artha Shastra, forests were classified into five categories for protection: one for religious study, two for supply of forest produce, three for uh, for royal uh, grazing of royal ele- elephants four for royal uh, hunting and five for general public hunting so this is based on kautilya's artha shastra that is the ancient view now policies adopted by the government of india on forest matters are forest policy of 1894 then national forest policy of 1952 then national forest policy of 1985 now how how on forest and wildlife enacted uh by indian parliament the laws that was enacted are indian forest act 1927 forest conservation act 1980 wildlife protection act of 1972 wildlife protection amendment act of 1991 then prevention uh, of cruelty of animals act of 1960 so with respect to forest and environment meaning of forest forests are the valuable gift of nature which have a moderating effect on climate or environment the word forest is derived from the latin word forest which means outside it includes all uncultivated and uninhabited land it is a collection of trees shrubs and herbs grass and grass and has wildlife be, uh, along with it now definition of forest there is no scientific definition to the term forest as the forest act 1865 and indian forest act 1927 have failed to provide exhaustive definition forest may be de- defined as an area of land proclaimed to be a forest under a forest law the human beings depend uh, depend mostly on the forest which provides timber fruits and herbs forest were the cause for drain the herbs grown in the forest provide uh, cure for disease that is many uh, herbal medicines are grown in forest further forest has many other resources too there are references of forest in vedas and ancient literature trees are worshiped and as gods and prayers so, uh, prayers and songs are chanted for them now forest also plays a vital role in the balance of ecological system so forest forms a part of the ecology the cultural heritage of our nation and is also important for our economy as well as the occupation of many communities that depend upon the forest now the presence uh, the pr- uh, fresh uh, preservation of the soil retain to retain water and allow them to flow slowly that is also a function that is uh, done by the forest trees are responsible for puri- purifying the air by releasing oxygen while they are in the process of photosynthesis so planting of trees and encouraging uh, forestation is one of the measures taken uh, to prevent air uh, prevent the growth of or increase of air pollution now forest also plays a vital role in the balance of ecological system the pres- uh, to preserve the soil retain water and allow them to flow slowly the forest uh, play a main role because the roots of the f- trees hold the soil in place so if there are no plants or no forest when the water flows over the land it takes away all the nutritious uh, top layer of the soil and there is soil erosion and there is a degradation of the quality of the soil but since the roots keep the soil in place it uh, soil erosion can be avoided plus it also retains the uh, nutritious uh, component of the soil and the the wood the dead leaves the dead plants also contribute to the nutrition of the soil now uh, you should understand that the soil is uh, the bedrock is a rock and there cannot be vegetation in the rock so soil is formed uh, through a long process so it is important that we avoid soil erosion and uh, encourage the growth of vegetation because formation of new soil uh, soil area or layer is takes years that is a long 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 years now 
Trees are responsible for purifying air by releasing oxygen while they are in the process of photosynthesis. The forest also control floods. They keep the air cool and clean. They provide shades. Now, forests have got industrial value also, like gums, resins, stands, charcoal, rubber, uh, BD leaves, etc., which are very useful for medicine. Forests also maintain ozone layer, which is important for the climate uh, climatic factors. The teak wood, timber, sandalwood, medicinal drugs, fruits, flowers, etc., are all gifts of forest. The population growth has adversely affected the forest area. People have migrated into the forest area for residence and this is affecting the animals and vegetation there. Now there is also industrial and mining process that are invading into forest area that is also a big issue for, for the preservation and conservation of the forest. And there are many kind of plants which are uh, in danger on the or in the verge of extinct extinction that exist only in certain uh, forests or certain parts so those also should be protected now legislative measures for protection of forest the first one in 1865 indian forest act was enacted then in 1894 forest policy was formulated again in 1988 national forest policy was declared now the Indian Constitution, Article 48, Capital A and 51, Capital A, deal with forest. So, in environment as total, which also include forest. It imposes the state as well as the citizen to protect and improve the environment. The Wildlife Protection Act, 1972, was passed to arrest the sharp decline of wildlife in the forest. So, that is Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Then, the Forest Conservation Act of 1980 was provided for the conservation of forest. Now, Indian Forest Act 1927. Indian Forest Act 1927. Uh, that here, originally, forests are placed in the state, uh, state list of the constitution. Accordingly, gives the state jurisdiction over both the forest and uh, forest, uh, private and public forest. So, Indian Forest Act was enacted uh, under the state legislation. So, it was initially placed under the uh, state uh, uh, list two, that is under the state uh, in state list of uh, seventh schedule. Uh, sorry, state schedule, uh, state list. Uh, so, uh, it was uh, the jurisdiction to enact laws was with the state, and Indian Forest Act 1927 was thus enacted. Now, kinds and types of forest. So, there are two mainly uh, two types of forest. That is public forest and private forest. So, according to Indian Forest Act 1927, it gives the states jurisdiction uh, over both private and public forest. So, what is a public forest? Public forest may be subdivided into three categories. That is reserved forest, village forest and protected forest. The forest in which state governments have proprietary interest is a public forest so what is a public forest the forest in which the state governments have proprietary interest is a public forest and they are divided into three that is reserved forest village forest and protected forest so what is reserved forest both uh, to the in, uh, indian forest act 1878 and indian forest act 1927 so we are uh, discussing about both the act both through the Indian Forest Act of 1878 and Indian Forest Act of 1927, the Governor General in Council wanted to reserve the areas having forest cover or having significant wildlife. The state government may notify any forest land as reserved forest for this purpose. When one, when once it is notified as reserved forest, access to such forest and its products becomes a matter of privilege subject to the permission of forest officials. Now, claims can be made against the government by the persons who lost their legal right over the forest land as a consequence of the notification or as a notification of that forest area as a reserve forest. Now, procedure for constitution of reserved forest. The manner in which a reserved forest has to be constituted is described in section 3 to section 20 of the act that is indian forest act of 1927 
so the uh, manner in which research forest has to be constituted is described in section 3 to section 20 of the indian forest act 1927 here the state government issues a preliminary notification declaring the lands with details of its location area and boundary etc to be constituted as a research forest such notification also appoint an officer of the state government as forest settlement officer forest settlement officer and that is an officer of the state government now the forest settlement officer fixes a period not less than three months so the period fixed is three months not less than three months to uh, uh, hear the claims and objections of every person claiming any right over the notified land the conduct the conduct inquires uh, into the claims and rights and after inquiry he might the officer or the authority inquires into the claims and rights and after inquiry he may reject or accept the same once the forest settlement officer has heard all the claims and appeals and settled the and settled the same then all the rights with the said piece of land vest with the state government now thereafter the state government issue notification under section 20 of the indian forest act 18, 1927 declaring the piece of land to be a research forest so the manner in which a research forest is constituted is discussed from section 3 to section 20 of indian forest act 1927 so under this there should be a state officer appointed as a forest settlement officer and he shall listen to all the claims uh, that any person has on such land that is a legal right affected and he should uh, have an inquiry and settle it and he should hear the claims within uh, not less than three months so the maximum time period allowed is three months and once everything is settled the land may be prescribed by notification as a reserved land and once it is reserved forest land and once it is a reserved forest land for any purpose for any uh, acquiring any access to the products or the land uh, a person it, it is a privileged right and the person needs a permission or a license from the government state government so prohibited acts in the research forest when once a land is declared as research forest then the following acts are prohibited that is uh, fresh cleaning setting fire to the research forest then uh, kindling keeping or carrying any fire except with the uh, previous consent of the forest officer then trespassing cattle then causing damage by negligence in filling any tree or uh, falling any tree or cutting or dragging any timber then cutting any tree or bark or leaves then pouring stones burnt slime burn li uh, burnt slime charcoal etc then breaking up any land for cultivation or other purpose then hunting shooting fish um, hunting for uh, fishing poisoning water uh, setting traps etc so all these are prohibited acts with respect to reserved forest areas or forest land now there is also penalty and punishment if any person commits any of the above prohibited act then he is punishable with imprisonment up to six months or fine up to 500 rupees or both and also compensation for the damage done to the forest now that is with the research forest and next we have village forest village forest are created by village communities when the state assigns some land in the right uh, of uh, these confer right to these community so further the state government is empowered to assign such duties to the village communities for production and implementation of the forest and the third category is protected forest so we also already discussed reserved forest and then village forest and now it is protected forest the state government empowered to declare any forest land as protected forest the state by declaring a particular forest land as protected forest exercise proprietary right over any part of the forest products so all these are with respect to public forest so public forest is somewhere where the government has the proprietary right and then we have the private forest private forest means any forest land under the possession and enjoyment of any private individual hence the private forest is a private property on the property 
of an individual, private individual. And then we have the Forest Conservation Act of 1980. So, so far we discussed about the Indian Forest Act of 1927 and it is a state legislation uh, since forest is uh, comes under state list. And now we are going to discuss of the Forest Conservation Act that is of 1980. The main object of the act is to provide for the conservation of the forest and for matters con uh, connected therewith or ancillary to or in incidental thereto. So, it can be uh, the object of the act is to provide for the conservation of forest and for matters connected therewith or ancillary or incidental thereto. Incidental or ancillary to the conservation of forest. So, that is the object of the uh, Forest Conservation Act of 1980. It is a small piece of legislation uh, passed by the Indian Parliament in 1980. So, this is by the Parliament. Now, salient features of the Act. So, Section 1 contains short title, extent and commencement. It extends to the whole of India except, uh, so the exception on the Jammu and Kashmir is taken away right now. Now, uh, the Forest Conservation Act of 1980 came into force on 25th of October 1980. Now, Section 2 imposes restriction on the uh, of, uh, on the uh, conservation of the forest or use of forest land for non-forest -for -forest purpose. So, uh, imposes restriction. Okay, Section 2 imposes restriction on uh, any activity for the usage of forest for non-forest purposes or forest land for non-forest purposes. Now, Section 3 is the Constitution of Advisory Committee. So, this is an important section of the Indian... Uh, of the Forest Conservation Act of 1980, that is Section 3, Constitution of Advisory Committee. Section 3 of the Act empowers the central government to constitute a committee consisting of such member of persons as it may deem fit to advise the government with regard to 1. The grant of approval under Section 2 and 2. Uh, any other matters connected with the conservation of forest which may uh, be referred to which may be referred to it by the central government. So, what does section 2 discuss about? It discuss about the restriction on any activity on the forest or the forest land for any purpose other than the forest purpose. Now, section 4 discuss about the penalty and yeah, penalty for consent. Uh, okay, section 3 capital A. So, section 3 discuss about the constitution of advisory committee. And Section 3, Capital A, discuss uh, of the Act, uh, discuss about the penalty for conservation of the, like penalty for the default in conservation of the provisions or compliance, default in the compliance of the provisions of the Act. Penalty for the default in the uh, compliance with the provisions of the Act is discussed in Section 3, Capital A. According to Section 3, Capital A of the Act, Whatever contravenes or abets contravention of any provisions of Section 2 of the Act shall be punishable with simple imprisonment for a period which may extend to 15 days. 1, 5, 15 days. Now, Section uh, 3, capital B, provides for punishment for offence committed by the authorities and government departments. So, here penalty is not only discussed for the private person but also for the government uh, departments and authorities. Section 3 discuss about the person who uh, contravenes the provisions of Section 2. Such person will be uh, having a liability of imprisonment up to 15 days. And Section 3, capital B, discuss about the punishment for the uh, authorities and uh, government departments if they have any default in compliance with the session. Now, Section 4, that is power to make rules. According to Section 4 of the Act, that is Forest Conservation Act of 1980, Central government by notification in the official gazette make rules for carrying out provisions of the act. And section 5 is about the repeal and saving the forest conservation ordinance 1980 is hereby repealed. So the first came the forest conservation ordinance and that is repealed and forest conservation act of 1980 was enacted and it came to uh, came into force on 25 October of uh, 1980. So that is with forest conservation act of 1980. And next, we have Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So, Wildlife Protection Act 1972 
wildlife which is part and parcel of the environment constitutes wealth of the nation it includes wild animals birds plants etc however man in the process of progress and development and also for his selfish ends is causing uh, much damage to the forest and wildlife wildlife is nature's gift and it decline it uh, decline its decline has an adverse effect on ecology and ha- hence there is an urgent need for protection of wildlife therefore in order to protect the wildlife from destruction the indian parliament passed Wildlife Protection Act in the year 1972 the main purpose of the act is to check deforestation it also provides for deforestation for of reserved forest and for use of forest land for non forest purpose so in previously forest conservation act of 1980 we discussed in section 2 that there is some restriction uh, put on the use of forest land for non forest purpose and here in uh, wildlife protection act of 1972 uh there it also provides for the deforestation that is wildlife act wildlife protection act of 1972 provides for deforestation of reserved forest and for use of forest land for non forest purposes now object of the wildlife protection act wildlife protection act of 1972 its object the main object of the act is to provide pro forestation to the uh, protection to the wild animals birds and plants that the act empowers the central government to devise certain areas to declare certain areas as sanctuaries or national parks the act prohibits hunting of wild animals birds etc and imposes punishment for violating the same now wildlife advisory advisory board under section 6 of uh, the state government shall constitute a wildlife advisory board so it is up to the state government uh, under section 6 to constitute a wildlife advisory board it shall consist of the following members one the minister in charge of forest in the state two two members of state legislature the third secretary to the state government the fourth the forest officer of the state forest department 5 chief wildlife warden that is ex officio then 6 officers of the state government not exceeding 5 so this is the composition of the wildlife advisory board that the state shall constitute under section 6 of the wildlife protection act of 1972 now such are the officers and non officers not exceeding 15 is also included in the group the central government can appoint chief conservator of forest and chief wildlife warden as the secretary of the board now with respect to the duties of the wildlife advisory board so we discuss about the composition of the wildlife advisory board and next towards the duties of the wildlife advisory board one to select areas declared as national parks sanctuaries and closed areas and administration thereof two formulation of the policy for the protection and conservation of the wildlife 3 to take measures for the protection of the uh, tribals of the forest now such are the duties as it also includes such are the duties as may be referred by the state government the board shall meet at least twice a year as such place as the central go- at such place as the central government may direct now with respect to section 9 section 9 prohibits hunting of any wild animals specified in schedule 1 2 3 and 4 now hunting of wild animals as we discuss section 9 provides some prohibition for hunting of uh, certain animals certain animals specified in the schedule 1 2 3 and 4 in the following cases hunting wild animals uh, can be permitted uh, to be permitted that is one the chief wildlife warden may if he is satisfied that any wild animal has become dangerous to human life or is so uh, disabled or deceased as may be beyond recovery by order in writing permit to hunt such animal now second scenario killing or wounding in good faith of an animal in defense of oneself or of other person and the third scenario if the warden is satisfied that any wild animal specified in schedule 2 3 and 4 has become dangerous to property including standing crops permit to hunt any such animals so this is the only 
or three scenarios where hunting of wild animals is permitted under the act now section 12 of the act empowers the warden to grant a permit to hunt for the purpose of education and scientific research so that is the section 12 now any person who hunts any wild animal shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend uh, which may extend to with a uh, which may the fine which may extend to 25000 or with fo- uh, with fine or both so the punishment of uh, who any person who hunts the punishment may extend up to 3 years of imprisonment or with fine of 25000 or with both so next is restriction on hunting so we discuss section 9 and section 12 where some uh, certain animals were allowed to wild animals were allowed uh, permitted to hunt and uh, restriction on hunting here under section 17 of the act that is wildlife protection act of 1972 wildlife protection act of 1972 uh, now here section 17 of the act provides the following restriction for hunting one no person shall hunt any wild animal by means of mechanically propelled vehicle or by aircraft two no person shall hunt any wild animal with chemicals explosive net poison poisoned weapon traps except a wild animal uh, trapping with a uh, trapping license now the third no person for the purpose of hunting set fire to any vegetation for no person shall use any artificial light for the purpose of hunting except specially authorized to do so under a license now the fifth one no person shall hunt any wild animal during the house of night that is between sunset and sunrise except when specially authorized to do so now the sixth one no person shall hunt any wild animal on a drinking place or on bath except water bo- water birds now the seventh one no person shall hunt any wild animal on any land not owned owned by the government without the consent of the owner or the lawful occupier of such land now that is with the restriction on hunting that is discussed under section 17 of wildlife protection act of 1972 now the constitution of central zoo authority Section thirty-eight, capital A of the Wildlife Protection Act provides the constitution of Central Zoo Authority. The authority shall consist of a chairperson and such member not exceeding ten, and a secretary may be appointed by the central government. The functions: the authority shall perform the following functions: one, specify the minimum standard for on housing, upkeep, and veterinary care of the animals kept in a zoo. Now the second one assess the functioning of the zoos with respect to the standard or the norms as may be prescribed third identify dangerous species of wildlife animals and assessing safety method in the zoo fourth coordinate the training zoo personnel in india now fifth provide technical and other assistance in zoo for their proper management of the zoo and sixth perform such other functions as may be necessary to carry out the purpose of the act So that is with the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and end of this session. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to click that bell icon so that you get an update when I upload my next video or a podcast. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day.